Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my interactive space engineer series where you tell me what to build and I build it. This week's suggestion comes from Nintenfan10 who requested some large ships that are mass produced. May not be suited for military action, but can be used by normal players to do different things and he described them as being the Toyotas of space. And here they are, these are the Volkschiff series of ships. The name's German and means people ship, like Volkswagen means people's car, and each of these has a different function and specialises in different features. And we'll have a look at what they can do over the course of this episode. While the purpose of each of the ships may differ significantly, there are certain design characteristics common to all. Firstly, a wide angle cockpit for the front of the ship so the pilot has excellent viewing range, convey a system that runs through the body of the ship, feeding ammunition to the small gun, or fuel to the reactor, or maybe components to machinery on board, as well as blinking nav lights, a feature that's returned from the Trident Warp Transporter, and finally a pair of engine pods that straddle the main spine of the ship towards the rear. The first ship we'll look at today will be the Volkschiff Nuclear Electric Hybrid. This ship is designed to be a highly efficient personnel carrier. Whilst not as fast as the Trident, it can carry 24 people which are considerably more people than the Trident can carry. Also, it uses a hybrid engine based on one nuclear reactor and eight batteries. The concept for this is the nuclear reactor charges the batteries, which then discharge when the engines are firing to get it up to its top speed or a cruising speed, whichever. Once it reaches the cruising speed, it switches off inertial dampeners and the ship only consumes a very small amount of power in this process. Once the power begins to run low, the reactor can recharge the batteries and the ship will be at full power again. This is preferable to having several nuclear reactors all powering the engines at once, as it means less uranium is needed to be spread throughout. The purpose of the Volkschiff pickup is to be able to transport goods around with relative ease, and it's heavily inspired by the Toyota Hilux pickup truck. Like a real pickup truck, most of the body is dedicated to the cargo carrying bay. In this instance, the Volkschiff pickup has only a very small interior, with a small room just off the main cockpit that holds the ship's vital machinery such as the gyroscopes, nuclear reactors, and gravity generators. The body stops a lot shorter than the other variants and that's to accommodate what will become a standard cargo container amongst my ships, which is held in place by a merge block on the end of the spine. To detach the main cargo container you simply lower the ship down onto a surface and the automatic landing legs on the container will lock it into position. Once you've done this, simply disable the merge block on the back of the spine of the ship and pull away, leaving the cargo container in place. When it comes to retrieving it, the ship is a literal pickup as it lowers itself down onto the merge block on the cargo container, re-enables it, disables the landing gear, and pulls away with the cargo container locked to the main body of the ship. The final ship we're looking at today is the Volkschiff Utility Craft. And this thing is the Swiss Army Knife Space Engineers. It'll do everything for you except for fight. It's kind of a jack of all trades but a master of none, and is equipped with grinders, welders, drills, internal refineries, arc furnaces, assemblers, and a medical bay. And it also has a couple of seats to transport passengers around. The telescopic arms with tools on the end were inspired by Thunderbird 4 from the Thunderbirds TV show, a small submarine that could extend equipment out of the front of it and use it for welding, cutting, or even firing missiles. While there aren't any weapons on this ship, the same principle applies when it comes to extending the drill heads, the grinders and the welders. Whilst this ship doesn't particularly excel in grinding, mining or welding, it is a major improvement over the basic ships that you would get on the spawn platform. It is also far more convenient than having a fleet of ships for specific tasks, as instead of having to switch between ships when you want to do a different job, all you have to do is extend the piece of equipment that you want and get to it. Furthermore, as it is in an amalgamated container system, you don't have to transfer resources between ships and you can immediately go to the next task without having to unload. These features make this an attractive ship to build in an early survival game of Space Engineers, owing to its versatility and dexterity when it comes to completing different tasks. Starting from this week, each ship will be available for immediate download, with a link in the description box below. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to leave a like, favourite, comment and subscribe. If you've got any ideas for another ship in the future, be sure to leave them as well. Hope you enjoyed the episode, I'll see you next time. Take it easy, have a good day, bye bye.